Hi guys, I welcome you all to Chakri Science Academy. In today's session, I have come up with very, very important questions from the chapter Animal Kingdom, which is going to help you in your NEET preparation and CET examination. Remember, this series is not only going to give you a confidence to ace the exams like NEET and CET, but also I am going to demonstrate you that how NCRT is going to be your secret weapon to prepare for such exams and ace it. So now let's see the first question. So in the first question, it says homeothermy is exhibited by, first of all, the students homeothermy means they are able to regulate the body temperature as per the external surrounding. Homeothermy is warm-blooded animals and we know it's birds and mammals. So second option is the right answer. But to give you more insights, let me show you a slide from the NCERT. So you can see here, they are talking about mammals. They have a unique feature. They have hair. They have external ear or pinna and you can also see they have mentioned that they have different type of teeth in the jaw which we call it as heterodont and uh, heart is four chambered. These are all the features given for the mammals and they are homeothermic. Very, very important. Now, let me show you for the birds. So, for birds also you can see class apes. So, for birds they have also mentioned that they are warm-blooded homeothermic. Okay, so the answer is birds and mammals. So let's go to the next question. So in the next question, they are asking, consider the following characters, which are air bladder, operculum, viviparity. And they are asking the characters present in bony fishes, they include which of the following. So first of all, remember, operculum is basically a covering of the gills. And uh, air bladder is basically helps in buoyancy. So these two features are present in bony fishes, but they are not viviparous. Viviparous means which are able to give birth to their young ones. So definitely they are not viviparous. So answer has to be one and two both. So which option has one and two? Option number three. So third is the right answer. But to give you more insight about the bony fishes, let me show you a slide. So you can see here, this is a slide for bony fishes. You can see that they are mentioning that in the bony fishes, they have four pair of gills which are covered by operculum on either on both the side. And their skin is covered by cycloid or tenoid scales. That is very, very important for the exam. And air bladder helps in buoyancy. Also fishes, we know the heart is two-chambered. So their heart is two-chambered one auricle and one ventricle. Also, they are cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded means they are not able to regulate their body temperature as per the surrounding. They are poikilothermic and their sexes are separate. Fertilization is external usually and they are oviparous. You can see that and development is direct. It means there is no larval stages present. And for your reference, here are some examples of marine and as well as we have freshwater forms. Now let's go to the next question. So in the next question, it is asking, which is not true for a generalized mollusca? So the options are a body segmented into head, visceral mass and foot. Second option is a rasping tongue like organ radula present. And third, mental cavity with gills and excretory structures are nephridia. Now, let me tell you, actually, this is present in mollusca. Okay, they have radula. They also have mental with gills. So, this is also correct. Their excretory structure is nephridia is also correct. Not all mollusks, but some mollusks do have nephridia. Also, on top of that, let me tell you, their body has head visceral mass and foot now it is a bit surprising if all four options are correct then what will be the right answer so actually the catch is this word segmentation their body is not segmented okay their body are unsegmented so that is why first option is our correct answer but to give you more insight let me show you a picture from the ncert so you can see here, it is the second largest phylum after arthropoda. We know that. Second, you can see that mollusks are both terrestrial and aquatic, both freshwater as well as 
marine water now they have organ system level of organization they are very well developed they also have bilateral symmetry triploblastic and they are silomates now understand their body is covered by a calcareous shell and now see the main point it says unsegmented their body is unsegmented plus it also says they have head foot and visceral hump which was correct but it is not segmented moreover you can see here that they have a mantle a skin folding which forms mantle over the hump and space between the hump and the mantle is called mantle cavity okay in which there are gills present so gills are also there in the mantle and excretory you can see nephridia is present on top of that their mouth contains rasping organ we call it as radula so you can see how in the neat exam they ask the questions from each and every line so ncrt is going to be very very crucial my goal of uh, sharing you uh, coming up with this video is to motivate you encourage you to read more and more ncrt because in your neat exam all the questions are going to be from ncrt and you can see the live example i am going to come up with such videos in each and every chapters of the neat and cet examination so let's see the next question so in the next question is how many of the characteristics given below are true for echinoderms so <clears throat> you have to select which of the following are true and which is false then we can count how many are true of them so first of all endoskeleton of calcareous uh, ossicles which is actually a correct statement there is no problem adult echinoderms are radially symmetrical but later on uh, you can see the larva are bilateral later on it turns into when it matures it becomes radial which is also correct statement then they are triploblastic yes it's correct and they are silomate echinoderms are more developed than mollusks and you can see if mollusks are triploblastic and silomate they are obviously then digestive system is complete it means they have a two separate openings mouth and anus so that is also true water vascular system yes they do have a water vascular system which helps in several functions like locomotion uh, you can say circulation as well as excretion respiration and so many functions are there now sexual reproduction yes there is a sexual reproduction internal fertilization no that is wrong echinodermates they don't have internal fertilization this is a wrong statement and it says direct development that also is wrong they do have larval stages so that is why we can say the correct answer is 5 okay so out of the following five statements are true about echinoderm but let me give you insight on this question so for echinodermata let me show you one by one first they have a calcareous ossicles first of all second you can see organ system level of organization you can see adult echinoderms are radially symmetrical but larvae are bilateral they are triploblastic and they are silomate you can see each and every line is very very important and their digestive system is also complete with the proper mouth and the anus okay now it says they have a distinctive feature that is water vascular system we given in bold in the ncrt it's very important which helps in locomotion capturing transport of food and respiration and excretion so many things okay now you can understand here their sexes are separate they have a sexual reproduction everything is fine but their fertilization is external not internal also they do have a indirect development with a larva so that is why only five statements are correct now we will see the next question so in the next question they are asking which of the following is not seen in hemichordates so in hemichordates first of all the first option is tripartite body organization it means their body has three parts okay which is actually true three parts are there second stomachard yes they do have a stomachard so that is also true rudimentary notochord no it they have a stomachard they don't have a notochord so that is why third option is incorrect and proboscis gland yes that is also correct so our answer is third option third option is going to be our right answer so you can see the details about hemichordate here first of all they do have a proboscis you can see that plus tripartite body is there for three divisions in their body is there you can see proboscis collar and trunk okay so both are correct on top of that you can see here that hemichordates have a rudimentary structure in the collar region called stomachord 
So they have a stomachord, which is similar to notochord, but they don't have a rudimentary notochord. So that is why the option rudimentary notochord is the correct answer. They don't have that, okay? And rest all the points you have seen here. Now we will go to the next question. So you can see they are asking identify the incorrectly matched pair. So first is Ornithorhynchus oviparous animal, uh, Macropus marsupial, Balenoptera that is the largest land animal, Tyropus flying mammal. So you can see first of all in this case Ornithorhynchus it is a correct answer. Okay, it's correctly matched. Then Macropus is basically a kangaroo. So it's a marsupial. It's a correct answer. Then Balenoptera is actually a blue whale. So it's the largest mammal, not the largest land mammal. We know what is the largest land mammal. It's elephant. We call it as Elephas. Elephant is the largest land mammal. Tyropus is also correct because uh, in Tyropus, it's flying fox. It's the flying mammal. It is flying fox. So that is why our correct answer is Balenoptera because it is incorrectly matched. Okay. So we will go to the next question. But before that, let me show you an idea. So duck billed platypus. This is your oviparous mammal. In viviparous, they all are actually viviparous, which you will see, which give birth to their young ones. So, Macropus is a kangaroo. Cheropus is a flying fox. Camelus is basically a camel. Maca is basically, Macaca is basically a monkey. Ratus is a rat. Canis is a dog. Felis is a cat. Elephas is elephant. Largest land mammal. Equus is horse. Delphinus is dolphin. And Balenoptera is your blue whale and panthera tigris panthera leo tiger and lion respectively now we will see the next question so they are asking consider the following sets of some animals the set that consists of all animals belonging to the same phylum is so they have given triplets three three uh, you know sets they have given we have to identify which all three belong to the same phylum so first option you can see pinnatoda aplysia and so in all three, basically they belong to mollusks. So I think first option is our right answer. They all are mollusca. But if we go in detail in the second option, Dentalium, Pila and Echinus. So Dentalium and Pila, these two are mollusks. So you can see these two are mollusca. But Echinus is sea urchin, it's Echinodermata. This is, this belongs to Echinodermata. Echinus, Echino. So that is why this is an incorrect option. Asterias is a sea, uh, you know, starfish. Antidon is sea lily. Acidia is sea squirt. Now, in all the three, you can see these two are Echinodermata. These two are Echinodermata. These two are Echinodermata. But Acidia, the sea squirt, is a chordates, tunicata. Okay. It is a chordata. So that is why this option is also wrong. Adamsia, Gorgonia. So they both belong to Nidaria. Okay. They all are. Cylindrata or Cynidaria. But when we talk about Pleurobanchia, sea gooseberry, it is a Tenophora. It's not a Cylindrata. It is a it is a Tenophora. So that is why first option is the correct answer. So we will see the next question now. Options are also given for the previous question for your relevance. Pila is the apple snake. Pinnacleda is a pearl oyster. Then sepia is a cuttlefish. Loligo is a squid. Octopus is devilfish. Aplysia is sea hare. Dentalium is tuck shell. 
and K of 2 pleura is a chitin. They all are mollusca. Examples of mollusca. The second largest phylum of animal kingdom. Now let's see the next question. So next question is asking about jawless fish. We know jawless fish is basically ignatha absence of a proper mouth and it says which lays eggs in fresh water and whose amocytes basically larva it's the name of the larva after metamorphosis returns to the ocean so we know the answer has to be petromycin petromycin is the right answer so first of all i'll share you the relevant information so in the slide you can see here they have given class cyclostoma which are jawless fishes they are jawless fishes cyclostoma they are the ectoparasites on some fishes and remember that they have gill slits for the respiration and they have sucking and circular mouth without jaws that's why we call it as ignatha it means absent okay now so their body is devoid of scale they don't have a scale or they don't have a fins okay and uh, also you have to remember their cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous not bony and you have to remember circulation is of closed type as they are highly developed so they will have closed type of circulatory system and cyclostomes are marine but migrate for spawning to fresh water after spawning within a few days they die their larva after metamorphosis they return to the ocean and you can see what are those two examples they are petromycin which is lamprey and mixin which is hagfish now one question after reading this will come in your mind is why the answer why the answer here you marked is petromycin why it cannot be mixin also the hagfish so to clarify that let me show you this so remember petromycin or lamprey they belong to cyclostoma ignatha and remember their larva is known as amono seed okay and which migrates from fresh water to the ocean after metamorphosis but if we talk about mixin so you can see or we call it as hagfish so for this case remember they, their development is direct they don't have a larva okay they don't have a larva so everything is true about them about spawning but the larva is not there so that is why mixin cannot be the answer the answer is petromycin or lamprey now we will see the next question so next question they are asking metagenesis refers to that was pretty obvious after the last question so first is the presence of different morphic forms okay that's polymorphism so it can't be true it's ruled out second alternation of generation between asexual and sexual phases of organism which is actually correct metagenesis refers to this third occurrence of a drastic change in form during post embryonic development no that is not correct and uh, presence of segmented body and parthenogenic mode of reproduction which is also not correct the correct example is metagenesis and we see this in cylindrita let me show you a slide for more information so in this case you can see they have discussed about you know that cnidarians exhibit two basic body forms we call it as polyps and medusa you can see that they have also given a difference between them polyps is sessile and they have a cylindrical form like hydra adamsia also is another example whereas the medusa form is umbrella shaped and free swimming like aurelia or jellyfish remember these cylindrata or cnidarians they exhibit exist in both the forms and they show alternation of generation we call it as metagenesis okay remember polyps form is medusa asexually and another is you can see that is a sexual phase okay so this shows metagenesis alternation of generation now we will see the next question so the question is asking select the taxon mentioned that represent both marine and freshwater species so guys this question is for your homework 
make sure you solve it and answer in the comment box below and don't forget to share with your friends who may need it keep following chakravi science academy for more such videos we are going to complete your need preparation in 45 days bye bye for now